Welcome to Hort Tube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, I'm at Bracey's Nursery in Louisiana. Uh, I came here one time uh, last year and shot a, a couple of videos. I'm doing a little tour across the Gulf, Gulf Coast. I wanted to come back over here. This is a super well-maintained, very large wholesale nursery. Uh, I'm super impressed. Uh, you know, both times I've been here, the landscaping around the office, just every, the attention to detail at this place is truly amazing. Uh, you can see from the drone footage here how how large of a place this is. This is a wholesale nursery. They sell to uh, landscapers and, and garden centers. Uh, today I thought I would uh, walk through uh, some of their tree production. They have a, uh, they do a lot of container trees. They, you know, have shrubs and trees and ground covers and lots of the things that I typically cover on the channel, but I don't cover a whole lot of trees, but I happen to be in a place today where they have tons and tons of container trees. So I thought we'd walk through and take a look at some of them and you can see how nice uh, their tree production actually is. So let's get started. So as you would expect in the uh, deep south, there's going to be lots and lots of southern magnolias. Uh, there's some Claudia Wanamaker right here. It's a, a great variety, but I'll, I'll call out some of the other varieties as we go up. I saw some Altas up there. That's a super narrow one that I'll show you in uh, just a minute. And uh, over here, there's some uh, weeping bald cypress. They've sold a lot of these, but these are super interesting, uh, super interesting plants here. This variety is called Fallen Waters. And uh, let me move on up uh, this aisle right here. I believe this is a this is a Schumard oak right here. These are native. Uh, this uh, this variety will go, probably somewhere right up around uh, where I live in Raleigh. It's probably native up to about central North Carolina, and then all along uh, the Gulf Coast. Uh, there's some live oaks right here. I think. Yeah, these are these are live oaks uh, right here, which are. Uh, evergreen oaks that you'll see from basically coastal North Carolina, even coastal Virginia. I sold plants at the uh, Raleigh Farmer's Market and there were two in the uh, parking lot there that are quite beautiful. I think the uh, asphalt keeps it a little abnormally warm, uh, but everybody loves uh, live oaks are just part of the uh, part of the Southeast really. Uh, swing you back around here to these uh, magnolias. I believe that's Alta right there. That's super skinny uh, upright one right there yeah that's what they are and then this is little Jim next to it and little Jim is upright and little Jim's definitely upright and narrow but you can see Alta is definitely just a little a little more uh, vigorously uh, upright swing swing back around here slow but you can see the quality of the production here uh, every one of these trees is identical if a landscaper came in here and needed 50 of these live oaks it wouldn't be any problem at all to find 50 similar pieces that's that's the you know that's the main thing you know in the nursery business and the tree you know when you're growing trees uh you know if somebody specs you know landscape architect landscape designer specs you know 20 pieces you know landscaper really wants to be able to go and find 20 that are that look alike uh, they definitely do a good job with that this is more little gem magnolias i think on both sides uh here i believe these are black black gums coming up right here yeah this is wildfire right here this is a uh, black gum these are fairly fairly newly planted or the new, new, newly pruned for sure and then some more live oaks uh, coming up right here I see some weeping willows uh, on the right uh, coming up right here we'll get a close look uh, at those here's a regular uh let me back out this is a regular bald cypress right here we saw the weeping bald cypress at the beginning that's the uh, regular regular one right there there's some cleveland pears right here which were you know supposed to be better than bradford pears but uh neither um <laughs> honestly neither should be planted they only have two so um uh only have two two of those left i hope most people are stopping growing these uh calorie pears really um these are uh, uh weeping willows here look great this is not an easy tree to have that uniform you know it takes a lot of staking a lot of work to uh to, to have them uh that uh, uh you know have all those pieces pretty much identical i'll swing uh, back around here there's more live oaks and here's uh, here's some uh nuttle oaks right here this is another native uh, to the southeast right here and i believe those schumard oaks are related uh to nuttle oaks but uh i've sold these this one this one has great fall this one just has great fall color like an orangey color i used to sell this one at my garden center i didn't do a lot of tree production i would buy trees from a 
you know, a grower like this and flip them uh, at my garden center. Okay, I'm gonna go find a, another row. They have some newer planted uh, red maples here. This is Florida Flame. Uh, red maples are pretty much native to the entire uh, eastern United States. Th these are pretty much uh, anywhere in the east from Canada down to, uh, down to the Gulf Coast. Uh, we can grow uh, red maples if I swing around here. Uh, these are pin oaks right here. Pin oaks are super, super common. Sometimes can be a, honestly a little annoying. They won't drop all their leaves at once. They kind of hold on to them through the winter, but beautiful, beautiful trees. This pin oaks, I believe, are actually native to like the Midwest and maybe over to the East Coast, but uh, a little further northern uh, uh, native area. But they'll grow, you know, they'll grow right down here to the uh, to, to the Gulf Coast area. And this is a this, what is it? This is a willow oak right here. I had a beautiful willow oak at my last house uh, willow oaks definitely take on the take on the shape of what you would you know just majestic uh, shade trees uh, for sure they have the small leaves and some people get annoyed by uh, you know it takes a little more effort to uh, get the leaves up but they do drop pretty quickly at once and make make great mulch anyway I never raked mine up at all and then uh, willow oaks are their native range is probably from somewhere around North Carolina, Virginia border and down uh, around the Gulf Coast. And I think all the way probably over to like East Texas. But again, they'll grow well outside of that range and uh, tons and tons of willow oaks across the country. Here's a red maple called Summer Red and you can see why it would be called that. It's in June right now. And it has this, uh, all the new growth on it is, uh, has that really nice red color. Here's a Jane Magnolia, which I've covered um, you know, on, the, on the channel, all the little girl. Uh, magnolias, um, Jane and Anne and several others, but this is a, uh, this one uh, will do some, a little bit of repeat flowering during the uh, summertime. That's a uh, nice, nice group of those. I'll swing around and show you one more thing here. This is a very large crop of uh, Chinese fringe trees, which will grow, ha have, a, have a pretty, have a pretty big range in which they'll grow. There is a native fringe tree but um, the Chinese fringe tree is definitely a, a, a better ornamental tree. Uh, and and uh, being honest, if you're, if you're growing in a, uh, in a commercial site and you're trying to have something that's kind of uniform, uh, Chinese fringe trees are quite nice, but there's definitely a place, a place for both of them uh, in the landscape. And, 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 I, and I love both the native fringe tree and the uh, Chinese fringe tree. I had a lot of repeats coming up this way, but then I got to a, a group of sycamores right here. Uh, lots of people love uh, sycamores. Sycamores are native to most of the eastern United States, all of the southeast and well up into the, uh, into the Midwest and along the uh, east coast. Uh, they can get massive, absolutely massive uh, in time. Uh, it goes by a lot of different names too. Uh, buttonwood, it's one of them. And the uh, New York Stock Exchange Agreement was called the, uh, I think it was called the Buttonwood Agreement or something like that because they signed the terms for the New York Stock Exchange under a buttonwood tree in New York City. Uh, this is an Arnold Tulip Poplar. I believe this, this one's super columnar. I don't think I've actually ever uh, seen one of these um, or spent any time with them. Uh, I know of them, but I, I, have, I haven't really uh, been in a nursery that was growing them. Super, super narrow. Uh, tulip poplar variety right there. Probably gets those, I'm sure it gets the same uh, tulip uh, flowers in the late spring or early summer. It's mid-June uh, down here in the Gulf Coast and any flowering that would have happened up in my area in the uh, early summer would have probably already happened uh, down here. Here's a beautiful crop of uh, Dura Heat uh, river birches here. I had one of these at the old house and I think I did, I'm pretty sure I did a video uh, on it. I'm 99% I'm sure there's a video on my channel called Dura Heat river birch and it's, these are nice uh, three trunk uh, river birches here uh, pretty fast growing once they're established the mistake people make with river birches frequently is they'll put them on a dry slope in their front yard and expect them to perform well they would like a uh, a slightly moist area i put them in it i had mine in a super flat area in my backyard it was a little slower to drain than the rest of the yard was of course in a southern nursery we're going to have lots and lots of crepe myrtles uh, here this is a tuscarora right here just getting started flowering I always called that one watermelon red sometimes it can appear a little more pinky and sometimes a little more a little more red than that this is a good variety been around for a long time there's some tonto crepe myrtles here tonto is a good red it's been around for a long time there's some redder uh, flowers on some varieties now but um, not necessarily better uh, 
uh, better trees uh, than Tonto though. Those are, those are nice. Coming right here, they've actually got some rising sun uh, red buds here, which look terrific. I don't know how they grow actually in the ground though along the Gulf Coast. I haven't, I mean, all my travels here, I haven't really seen um, red buds uh, in the ground right here along the Gulf Coast. They may ship these a little, uh, a little further north, but they can certainly do a good, a really good job of uh, growing them here in the nursery. I'm here a little early on most of the crepe myrtles in the nursery uh, opening up. This is uh, Natchez here, probably the most popular big white one still to this day. Gets uh, quite big, has the best, I mean, it still has, you know, all the characteristics that we want in a crepe myrtle of it. This is a weeping variety, uh, gets large, has the nicest bark, but I can't believe how uniform all these trees are. It's not easy, it's really not easy, especially with a variety like Natchez that can put on several feet of growth in a single season. They've got some Muscogee crepe myrtles here that they're growing as standards or a single trunk. Again, another thing that uh, uh, takes quite a bit of work. Uh, these are probably, I'd say seven feet tall above the container at this point. There's another white crepe myrtle here called Sarah's Favorite. I grew this one for a little while at my place. It's supposed to be, I, I, I understood more cold hardy, uh, slightly more cold hardy than Natchez, I don't know. But if you're in uh, zone 6B and you wanna try a crepe myrtle, I think Sarah's Favorite's one that um, people recommend. It's supposed to be a little more cold hardy. Like I say, I, I actually, I do not know because I've never tried it. I believe these are Catawba right here, which is still one of the best, one of the best purples. You see that right there. And Catawba's a semi-dwarf. You can keep this one a, a little smaller than some of the other crepe myrtle varieties. I don't know if you could see, the top of those houses right there is where I started. And then I came over to this area and started working my way, way down right here. And I'm gonna swing around and show you. I'm gonna show you a few more things, but uh, I'm not gonna make it all the way <laughs> out to there. It is so many, so many trees. It's just acres and acres of uh, container trees here. And they're all like uh, little soldiers uh, lined up. But let's let's take a look at a few more things before I wrap this up. This is one of the coolest finds so far. These are Nellie Stevens hollies. Don't look like any Nellie Stevens holly you might have seen before because they've grown them uh, as standards or uh, tree formed uh, Nellie Stevens. They've been limbing these up for a long time and preparing them, you know, to grow this uh, top on them at this point. But these are these are quite nice. They just continue to clean up these. Uh, uh, suckers uh, that are continue to uh, grow down at the bottom, but these are This was a lot of work. Let's just say this is a lot of work to grow these uh, tree form Nellie Stevens hollies Here's some Savannah holly standards right here, and uh, they're actually uh, Look at all look at all the berries on them But they look fantastic. Just another example of a, a lot of attention to detail to do that This was kind of a strange thing to me. They can grow these camellia japonicas which we typically think of as, you know, park shade uh, evergreen shrubs. And they've got them growing out here in the uh, middle of this field. And I mean in the middle of a giant field uh, in uh, South Louisiana in the full sun. And they're doing, they're doing fantastic. They make me rethink um, how I should have been growing my Camellia japonicas when I had my nursery. This area I've wandered into over here has lots and lots of upright, uh, narrow hollies and uh, junipers and that kind of thing. These are blue point junipers. I think this one should probably be used in the place of uh, uh, some of the upright arborvita that people try to use in the uh, southeast. This is a much tougher plant. Take, gonna take quite a bit less water to grow that blue point juniper. Some more nice ones right there. And when I spin around right here, there are some uh, Arizona cypress. I don't know if this is blue ice or uh, might, be, uh, might be blue ice. It's amazing you can smell these things. Uh, just walking past them. Uh, they have a very, very distinctive uh, smell to them. And then going back over here, there's Hollywood junipers and uh, some more upright uh, southern magnolias, some other holly varieties right here that have been um, cut into uh, basically little Christmas trees and all out in that area, same thing. Just a ton of pieces here that are just uh, specifically grown to look like little Christmas trees. I showed you those tree form savannah hollies a, a minute ago. Here are some that are just uh, more in their, uh, more how they would typically grow. Not really, um, this one will grow a little bit looser in the ground typically, but uh, with a little bit of shearing, they can be kept to look just like that. Big, beautiful Italian cypress right here. Uh, I don't know, those are, uh, those are uh, uh, nice pieces right there. And then uh, I'll wrap this up with these, uh, here's some more Nellie Stevens hollies that have been grown as trees or standards here. They're just amazing. And uniformity again is just 
It's just really wild. So uh, thank you very much for watching this video. I'm actually putting up another video from uh, Bracey's Nursery doing a tour of the uh, owner's yard. So uh, be on the lookout for that video.